Thank you very much. You're a very exciting class. We love you very much. We thank God for you. And you are learners in the great Word of God. And I believe that from this class there shall flow blessing even to the ends of the earth. And we're so glad that you're here studying pertinent truth. Truth that has to do with victory for today. Truth that has to do with radiance. Truth that, ha truth that has to do with a victorious life. May God bless you in this truth. And may this truth live dynamically within you. And may you become a sharer of this truth. And may it bless multitudes. We believe God for that. For this lesson, which is very important, uh, we have called this lesson, Can Witches Stop Witches? And it, it's, it's sort of related uh, to our last lesson, uh, relating, uh, related to curses. Uh, is a curse for real. Uh, they are real, but you cannot put them on God's people because God's people are not cursed. God's people are blessed, and you can only put them on sinners. And so uh, it was a very, but this one uh, is in the realm of spirit. Do spirits fight spirits? Do witches fight witches? It's very exciting. May I bless you first. Now we thank you, Lord, uh, for this great, great class. And we thank you for your wonderful spirit that's in this class. One of the most exciting groups we have ever met. And we thank you for them. Now bless them. Bless them in this tremendous truth. And lift them up and give them strength and make them great. We believe you for it. And we thank you for it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Thank you very much, and may the Lord bless you. And turn with me in your books, please, in your Bibles, uh, to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11. Uh, chapter 11, and I wish to read to you beginning in verse 17. In verse 17, Luke, uh, chapter 11. Uh, you have it in your, in your syllabus there. Uh, can witches stop witches? All right. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11, and verse 17, it says, But... He, knowing their thoughts, that was Jesus, said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. Oh, we have to know that. We have to know that. I mean, our, our, our nation today, the survival of it would be unity. To get the clashing away and the fighting away and the bitterness away. And he says, A house divided against itself, that house falleth. Uh, when members of the family start running away from the other members of the family, it's a divided house mostly, usually, divided by anger, by anger welling up within oneself. That's verse 17. Verse 18 says, If Satan also be divided against himself, how shall his kingdom stand? He, he is the monarch of his kingdom. They obey in his kingdom. I understand from people that have been witch doctors and things like that, that many spirits are beaten and harassed by other spirits and, and by the devil himself. And they're afraid not to report victory back when they're sent out on a mission. Because you say that I cast out devils through Beelzebub, and if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. Now, we find here uh, in this reading that the people of that time believed that there was a prince among demon spirits, and that this prince was called Beelzebub. And, and they very mistakenly says that's who Jesus was. And he said, now, uh, that couldn't be true because I'm busy healing the sick and caring for the good. So I couldn't be because that would be a house divided against itself. And I can prove this in that I have these 12 disciples and also these 70 disciples, and they're doing the same thing, and they're your judge rather than me. Ha. Jesus was always an orator. He was always exciting. He was always a victor. He, handled it, he always handled it well, whatever question you ask him. Verse 20, he says, but... If I with a finger of God cast out devils. Now he changed the story, you see. He showed them that he, that, he, that he wasn't on the devil's side because that would make the house divided. But he said, if I do this by the finger of God, then I want to tell you something. Then the kingdom of God has come to you. That means you have light to live by. Did you know if you receive light on a thing and you don't accept it, uh, that you go into darkness? You don't stay the same. You go into darkness. Anyone that refuses light goes into darkness. You don't remain the same. People that have the light on the infilling of the Holy Spirit and don't receive it, they go into darkness. Or any other truth, you have to receive what God gives you. Verse 21 says, and this is the, the, the story, a strong man who is armed, well, he keeps his palace or his castle or his fortress, you know, and he keeps his goods, and his goods are in peace. He's got his treasures, he's got his animals, he's got his people, and they're at peace. Verse 22, but... When a stronger, strong man, when a greater general, when a greater fighter comes, 
and he comes upon him and overcomes him, then he takes from him all that his armor, wherewith he trusted, takes it away. And he divideth the spoils of that man. Now, when Jesus comes, he is stronger. And so he destroys witchcraft. He destroys witches and takes away his armor, its strength, and takes the spoils, which are human beings, and brings them into the kingdom of God. But now this also takes place in the world of spirit. One spirit casting out another spirit. And we're going to get into it real strong. Witchcraft is tremendously on the, uh, on the uprise in this country. And uh, there, there are some cities who claim to have as many as several thousand witches living in them, like the city of Philadelphia. And so witchcraft being on the uprise, then we better study it more, understand what it is. And are, can witches stop witches? Better first say, are, are witches real? Does a belief in witches mean that you are naive? Or that you're superstitious? Superstitious in some way? Are not up to date with Western culture? It does not. Are witches confined? Are, are, are witches confined to the primitive parts of the world only? Or are they found in the, in, in the modern world, like Europe, or England, or America? I wish to answer that by saying geography has nothing to do with witchcraft whatsoever. Nothing to do with it at all. Not even culture has anything to do with it. Our riches have anything to do with it. One of the most sinister creatures of all history was in the palace of the Tsar. And, and he, he destroyed the royal family, you see. And so riches and culture don't have anything to do with it. The devil can deceive anyone who will give their mind over to him. If you give your mind over to him, he'll deceive you. He is a deceiver, and he's capable of deceiving. All right, the question comes in, uh, can a witch stop a witch? That really means, are there grades of witchcraft? Are there witches that, uh, that are stronger than other witches? And can this one say, I'll do this? The devil says, I cancel that out. <laughs> I cancel that out. In the air of demon power, there are degrees and variations of power. Lots of it. Lots of it. And we're not talking about caricatures like Bewitched on television, or I Dream of Genie, a uh, manipulation of cameras, or the Six Million Dollar Man, or the Wonder Woman. Now, no, we, we're not discussing that. We're, not, we're talking about reality. The Apostle Paul said in Ephesians 6 and 12, there are principalities of demon authority. There are principalities in an area where a prince rules over his subjects. And this means that in the world of evil spirits, there are categories of authority and areas where certain spirits rule over other spirits. There are evil spirits who command other evil spirits, and they have to obey him. You remember in a recent lesson, I told you about Arlindo Barbosa, a Brazilian witch doctor. Now, now Arlindo declares and, and says, and it, and it happened because, uh, because the whole family knows it, that there were two demons who fought over the possession of his brother, who was eight years old. And the battle was so great that these demon spirits killed his brother, destroyed him, he died. And Arlindo, the witch doctor, was sitting in the room in a trance, and with a spiritual eye, saw the whole battle and heard the evil curse words, blasphemous words coming out of these two spirits at each other. And he saw the demons leave the room through a window, screaming and cursing. And he opened his natural eyes his own brother, contorted, lay dead before him. And so we have a tremendous example that witches fight witches, that demons fight demons, that there's no peace and no love in that nether world uh, owned by the devil, who is a father of lies and the father of anger and the father of death. And you couldn't expect peace and tranquility to be there. Now, the Lord Jesus Christ who is the master teacher, by the way. Uh, let him teach and you got it made. Uh, the Lord Jesus said in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24, 
excuse me, chapter 12 and verse 43. And also he's, he, the same is mentioned in the Gospel of Luke chapter 11 and verse 17. The Bible says, a certain man was cleansed of an evil spirit. Now this is what Jesus said. A man had an evil spirit in him, it was cast out of him. He said that that evil spirit went into dry places. It, it meant he went into unpopulated areas, desolate areas, was sent there because he was cast out of this person. And that he couldn't find any rest out there. It really means he couldn't find anybody to possess and to live in out there. And so he, re, he returned to the former victim that he had possessed. And he found the former victim with three things in, in Matthew's gospel. It says he was empty and he was swept and he was garnished. Now, Jesus said that this spirit had the opportunity, the privilege, and the authority to go and find seven other spirits. He went and found them. The Bible says they were more wicked. He might have been a spirit of lying. They might have been a spirit of lust and a spirit of murder. It says, spirits more wicked than himself. And they came and repossessed this person. Now there wasn't one in him. There were eight. And it says the latter end of that man was worse than when he used to have one in him. Now, the, the, the key to the story is that a spirit that had been cast out of him had power to go and direct and to boss seven other spirits. They were more sinful, more dirty than he was, and to bring them with him and say, you come and sit in this man with me and let's destroy his life together. Because each of these spirits would have a different manifestation that they wanted to take him through. And so they would, uh, they would take him through that. And so they came and repossessed that man. Then Jesus declared the last end of that man was worse uh, than the first. Now, uh, there are two things I'd like to say here. And, and one of them is this, that when anybody is, uh, is freed from a spirit, whoever does it for them should teach them and to see that they get something into that emptiness. You know, it's not enough to say to a man, come up here and let's get the devil out of you. What are you going to put in him, you see? You've got to fill him with something. He needs to be filled with Jesus. He needs to be filled with love. He needs to be filled with the Word of God. He needs to be filled with prayer. There are just so many things that he needs to be full of. We don't want empty Christians walking around. Because he was empty, because he was swept, you know, he, all the things had been swept out, and there he was. Garnished, that means decorated. Maybe in one hand he had a song book, and another hand he had a prayer book, and there, there he went along, but he didn't have anything inside, you see. And so the demon was able to repossess him. And more than that, that demon had the authority to bring with him uh, uh, seven others. And my global experiences around the world, uh, there has often been deep rivalry and hatred between demon spirits that we've discovered and had to deal with. There's boasting among demon spirits as to who is the greatest, who is the most powerful, and those who are the nearest, the, the leader, Satan himself. And there's bossing, and there's governing, and there's greed, and there's hate among evil spirits. And so now witches, witches are the recipients of these spirits. And, and, and witches are people possessed of evil. And so therefore, uh, witches do stop witches. Witches hate witches. Witches contradict witches. And, and so because all of them have evil spirits in them, and evil spirits do not live in harmony one with another. You say, well, what in the world is a witch? A witch is a woman uh, practicing the black arts, and it's called a witch. And witches are held to be possessed of supernatural powers by a pact or an agreement or an affiliation with the devil or with a familiar spirit of some kind. So the use of witchery is a very deliberate and intentional interaction with the devil or a, f or a familiar spirit uh, living inside of a human being. And they then have power that they did not have as a normal human being. And many times we, we also call a man a witch, but the proper name is he is a warlock or a male witch. And the two are, are usually together. They, they, they've Warlocks and witches function together 
and we often call a man a witch like we do, but it's usually a woman. Some people, I thought a witch uh, could transport herself through the air on a broom, uh, and, and, uh, and some believe that a witch could turn themselves into an animal, and many were afraid of a spell that could uh, cause them to be sick or something that would come to them from witches. But I want to tell you something, that in God's divine purposes, if you love Him with all your heart, and you serve Him with all your heart, you are immune to those things. And you can resist them and cause them to get out of the way because of the mighty power of God uh, that, that is within you. You say, well, what's the difference between a sorcerer and a witch? Generally, the rendering of the same original words translated witch is also a sorcerer. It is the pretended definition of the unknown in connection with demon powers and idol worship. And so when we say uh, a so-and-so is a sorcerer, we're actually speaking of a witch. So this art in ancient times was also practiced in connection with pharmacy, or the mixing of drugs into medical compounds for various healings. All the witch doctors of Africa are mixer of compounds of some kind to, to give you. And there isn't a witch doctor in Africa, and maybe in South America too, that don't say, here are some compounds that I put together from medical herbs I found in the jungle, and they will do certain things for you, even to help you give birth to children and all kind of things. So witches embrace various forms of paganism, many forms of it. Historically, uh, their religion is the worship of Satan uh, through an ancient horned god uh, of ancient times. And, uh, and so this, this paganism has come right down into our times, and there are many witches in the land. And don't think that they're screwballs, and don't think that they're peculiar-looking people. They're not. You can't tell them when you see them face to face. You can only tell them uh, when they go into their mystic uh, maneuvers in, in their seances and things of this nature. Then they're, they're, they're being changes, and they become another person. If you could have seen Arlindo Barbosa, uh, Oliveira down in Brazil, uh, <laughs> working in the president's office like I did, you would never think he was a witch doctor, uh, dressed in a, in a tuxedo suit with white gloves on. Uh, he didn't look like a witch doctor. It was when he got home and cut a chicken's throat and drank the hot blood, and his face changed and his body changed, and he began to writhe like a, like a serpent, that you says, hey, hey, there's somebody else here. You say, what is a wizard? Uh, the, the term wizard denotes a person pretending to be wise regarding unknown factors. That's what the word wizard means. Uh, but the term is usually employed as the masculine of witch or warlock. The wizard is normally a, a man, a male, so they say. Uh, there are many varieties of witchcraft practiced today. However, they are all holding essentially the same beliefs and practices, and it's not the name that you and I are involved in. It's the, actually what they are and the spirits within them, and our desire to set them free. We're God's freedom, freedom army, and we pass through the land to help set people free from the devil's power, saying God is able, God wants to, God is ready to set you free, and he has ability to set you free, receive freedom from the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's what it's all about. Now, the, the, the Bible very carefully deals with the reality of witchcraft. And, and that you should know, that you should be sure of, and that you should understand. In Exodus 22 and 8, it says, God said, they shall not allow, you shall not allow a woman to live who practices sorcery. Now, uh, you say, why? A little leaven, leaven is the whole lump. And it's like homosexuality. Uh, it, it's amazing to me how intelligent people could think homosexuality is all right, and a person has their own right to it, when a homosexual cannot perform without an innocent person. He's looking for your boy, and, and, a, and a lesbian is looking for your daughter. I mean, that's what it's all about. I don't know how more stupid we're going to get in this country. And, and, and so it is here uh, with, with witchcraft. Uh, witchcraft is of the devil, and, and the Bible says that a person that's a witch that uses sorcery shouldn't live. You say, why? In order to save the rest of the population, because all they do is go around, uh, uh, put, put the money in my palm, and I'll tell you, tell your fortune. I come to this seance, and I'll introduce you to your grandmother that's dead. And all they're doing is introducing you to demon power. And so God says further about it in Deuteronomy 18 and 10, these words, the, the, the book of Deuteronomy, and the verse 10. He says, There shall not be found among you any who makes his son or daughter pass through the fire. Maybe you didn't know that. Brother, there's a lot of human sacrifices. Even this day, there are human sacrifices and witchcraft. And not too many miles from where I'm standing here, a, a, a witch coven uh, was discovered, and there were little baby bones all over the place that looked as if they had been in a fire. And, and so it isn't a dream we're talking about. 
Uh, this thing functions today and it's the devil's power and we have to destroy it in Jesus' name. And he says, uh, who uses divination or a soothsayer, an augurer or a sorcerer, says these should not be permitted. You know, the sad end of the first king of Israel was King Saul. And in 1 Samuel 15 and 23, for rebellion is the, as the sin of witchcraft, stubbornness is as idolatry. And he says, because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he also has rejected you. King Saul went from stubbornness to rebellion to the witch of Endor before he went on to hell. Isn't that an amazing situation? It is an amazing, amazing, amazing situation. And not only did God speak to him, you know, but God spoke to a nation. In 2 Kings 33 and 6, when Joram saw Jehu, he said, Is it peace? Jehu answered, can, How can peace exist as long as fornication of your mother Jezebel and her witchcrafts are so many? Here was a queen <laughs> in, in, in a godly country, a country of Israel, a queen, and she was practicing witchcrafts. Now there was trouble in the land, there was war in the land, and, and Jehu was, a, was, was an army leader a military leader, and, the, and Joram up in the palace said, Say, is everything peaceful? He says, there's not any peace. With all the witchcrafts in, in the palace of the king, there is no peace. A king with an ancestor like Moses and David had turned to witchcraft. And God tells us of others in 2 Chronicles 33, 6, and, and, and he burned his children as an offering to his God. See there? In, in the valley of the sons of, of Hinnon, and practiced soothsaying, augury, and, and sorcery, and dealt with mediums and wizards, he did much evil in the sight of the Lord, provoking him to anger. Brother, if you want God angry, you start worshiping the devil, and, and, and he, will really, he will really let you have it. God does not want it. God just does not want it. God wants you to be clean and pure and holy in his holy name. God rebuked the nation of Israel, and through the, the prophet Micah, and in chapter 5 and verse 12, and I will cast off witchcraft and sorcerers from your land, and you shall have no more soothsayers. This reveals the anger of God against demon activities, against polluting the land, which a witchcraft is contagious. And God says, I'll clean up the land and clean it out. And, and he uses capital punishment to do that. And God's furious about it because an immortal soul is, is precious. It's worth the whole world. The prophet Nahum also described the people of Nineveh. You heard about Nineveh and, and, and what happened to it. And Nahum 3 and 4, because of the multitudes of the whoredoms of the well-favored harlot, the mistress of witchcrafts, that selleth nations through her whoredoms and families through her witchcrafts. God was, God was speaking through Nahum to the people of Nineveh about what they were guilty of and was causing destruction to come upon them. The Apostle Paul in the New Testament speaks to us of the works of the flesh. In Galatians 5, he says, Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, various emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, and heresies, leading off with idolatry, witchcraft, and, so th and, and things of this nature. Isn't that amazing? And then we read in the Acts of the Apostles, uh, in, in chapter 8 and verse 9, that there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery, and bewitched the people of Samaria, given them that to mean that he was some great man. And Paul came, says, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest. From the least to the greatest. They respected this man that was a witch doctor. And this man, uh, that this man had the great power of God. Verse 11 says, and to him that they had regard because that of long time he had bewitched them. And Paul came and broke the power of that thing and set those people free by his mighty power. In the days that are before us, uh, God says, and the Bible says, you have to believe it. In Revelation 9 and, and 21, it says that God is going to send judgment upon men for worshiping devils. That's Revelation 9, 21. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. In the great tribulation, when God gives men an opportunity to repent, one of their greatest sins is witchcraft, sorceries. Air witchcraft. There is no true love or goodwill among demons. There isn't any. There just isn't any. They're full of divisions. They cause humans to be likewise. When they come into devils, you can't get along with them. When they come into humans, the devils cause them to be so irritable that nobody can get along with them. So therefore, the proliferation of witchcraft and of witches, are they, do they have the ability to stop witches? And, and to do things to them. Well, there's a war over who controls the possessed and the word of spirit. And anywhere you go, 
They'll always say there's the big devil and the little devil. <laughs> and they're serving them by bigs and littles. I wish to tell all of them, big and little, Jesus Christ is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And in the body of Christ, there is unity. We are one by the Spirit, united by the power of the Holy Spirit. And in the Blessed Trinity in heaven, there's perfect unity. There has always been perfect unity. There always will be perfect unity. And in the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, the church, there is unity. Some people think there is a, uh, a lot of division, but not on the right things. There might be of whether you should be baptized this way or that way, but the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us all from all sin, and that we're all going to the same place to live forever in heaven. And so we thank God for the unity and the blessing of being part of the body of Christ and being part of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we say uh, among all of the, 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 the spirits of, of hell, uh, let the witches fight the witches and let the devils fight the devil. But you and I are united to destroy them, to destroy their power, to destroy their curses, to destroy everything about them, no matter what it is, to, to, dis, to call it defeated by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that we dwelling together in harmony one with another. Jesus said, one can chase a thousand, two can put ten thousand in flight. We multiply our spirit through unity. We multiply our effectiveness through unity. And God commands us to walk in unity in the whole body.